Hello, welcome back. Uh, today we are, well, going to be reacting. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another broadcast. What the hell was that? Uh, anyway, I already don't know what's. How did that go up? Anyway, so we're going to be reacting to one football's video. Dortmund won Anti Fatty to replace Jaden Sancho, plus PSG are champions. Daily news basically. Um, some of the stuff they say is, well, they're rumours, but they're completely untrue. We're not going to be doing this like every day, just on the ones where there's big stuff happening. This one's not too much of a big thing, but nevertheless. <clears throat> Dortmund wants Sancho replacement, Dortmund PSG are champions, Dortmund has offered a new deal to Nali to become one of the world's best and a transfer roundup all coming up in the next few minutes. As I'm your host Matt Froelich, you are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. So first up and after reports yesterday that Borussia Dortmund are willing to let Sancho go, apparently they've already identified a replacement in the form of 17 year old wonder kid and Fati. Now of course I know what you're thinking, there's no way that Barcelona are going to be like, hey, have one of our best products in years from the youth academy sure take him why not apparently the deal will only be alone or they're gonna send him to Dortmund but with they're gonna send him to Dortmund but with I don't think it would be alone though I mean if they've just held, sold one of their best players they're not gonna get a worse player who's really hung not even permanently on it on a loan a buyback clause. This is pretty much standard procedure from Barcelona. Every time they're selling a young player, which they think isn't quite ready just yet, but could go on to be an absolute superstar, they have a buyback clause. Now, this obviously doesn't really bode too well for Dortmund. I mean, technically, they could sell Sancho, buy Fatty, he'd be brilliant, and then Barcelona would just sign him back. But you think about it, that's really what Dortmund have been doing in the last few years. They take a great player, make him even better, and then sell him on for a lot more money. The only problem is that, yeah, you don't know how much the buyback clause will be in Ansu Fatty. Fatty's deal. Anyway, should they, anyway, should they, yeah, they sell you know, Jaden yeah. Sancho, they're they obviously going to have a massive Sancho, gap, but I'm not gap, really sure whether the 17 year old Fatty really can sure fill it. Don't get me wrong, he's been brilliant don't since he's come into the team. He's shown real, real prospects, I've no doubt he'll go on to be a good player. But filling the shoes of Jaden Sancho, and by the way, Sancho's putting in ridiculous numbers consistently for like two seasons now, that's going to be rather difficult. Having said that, I do think with the money that Dortmund get from Sancho, I wouldn't put it past them to go and sign somebody else. I mean, not necessarily who's going to stand in the way of fancy, but someone who can provide competition and should the youngster, I don't know, play too much. Should the youngster, I don't know, play too much. I think that's probably more likely getting anti fatty on loan and buying another young player. Maybe too many games or it's a lot of pressure for him, they could have a more experienced player come into the squad. Anyway, next up and following on from the news in the last few days, the league out was cancelled where they've now decided the PSG are champions. They are champions. Okay, so what I think should happen say continue the league but just behind closed doors uh it's a difficult one because psg they do deserve it um but then they might have played half of this so there's eight there's 38 games isn't there and halfway would be 19 which is fair you've each played one game versus each team now what might have happened is the team in second have played all the big big clubs and the team in first, PSG, have played all the clubs that are uh, in the bottom half of the table. That's why I don't think it's fair to call Liverpool champions, because they've still got Man City, Chelsea, uh, I think it was Man United, in a row. So, you know, I think... It might be a Did quite a fair few points ahead of Marseille in second place, but that's not really the big deal. The big deal is that they've also decided to add relegation to the list of things at the end of the season. That includes Nîmes, Amiens and Toulouse, who are all now been relegated to the second division of... I think if they are going to name people champions, then they do need to relegate clubs as well. French football. This to me seems extraordinarily harsh and this is what we've been talking about the Premier League basically they shouldn't be doing. I mean in Nîmes case especially there were three points of safety with 30 points to play for. Like it's not even like they were miles away. Toulouse was something like 17 or 18 points off. Like I get that fine but there is no way that you could say oh you know what they deserve to be relegated without 10 games to play. The way that Eredivisie have done it with no promotion or relegation 
that seems to be the way forward for me. I mean, Serie A have come out and said that they probably follow Liga's example as well, meaning Juventus would be champions yet again. I'm starting to see sort of a trend in the fact that no one really care if a team is so far ahead and they were given the champions. Like, Liverpool were 25 points. Like, Liverpool were 25 points. The thing with Liverpool, though, is they deserve it and all that. They really do deserve it. But they haven't done enough. But at the moment, if they carry on the league, they could still not win it. So I think that's quite unfair. That's why I want to resume the season or just cancel. Ahead. No one cares if they get the title. Ahead, no like, they're, they're, so the title. Ahead, they're so far ahead, they're obviously going to do it. Even though you never know what happens in football, you'd assume that they'd win two out of their last ten games. But when it comes to relegation, as we mentioned before, with Villa being one, having played one game less than the rest of them and they could have moved out if they win it, this would seem extraordinarily harsh, especially with the other places like Champions League spots, Europa League spots as well. If you're going to Cancel the season. I if think. Cancel the season. I think. Obviously, if you like Corona, there is going to be harsh decisions. But I think the Aston Villa playing one game less, that that shouldn't be allowed. They should at least just knock off one of the last games for everyone, or let Aston Villa play behind closed doors. So you might as well void it because you can't well also, it, on top of this, you can't, can't just have one uh, decision for one team uh, and not for the rest. For team like you can't, can't give. Liverpool like the champions yeah. and Liverpool Leicester champions City and Chelsea the Leicester, Champions League spots Chelsea, but Champions also say the relegation spot. spots don't matter and you guys can just stay in the division on top of this it looks like no one is willing to um, extend the season by having more teams in the league now Liga could have had a few teams promoted same with Serie A with the Premier League to have like 22 or 23 team campaigns that would cause even more of a backlog with the teams then playing around 44 matches next season and when you consider there's already quite a tight schedule especially in England and especially as they're going to want to be finished before the Euros that is definitely definitely off the ta table anyway as for return to action anyway as for return to action I don't think that will happen either because of the Champions League these teams are going to get no rest but yesterday on the daily news he said that um, maybe um, no I think it's not maybe but if they, the season continues there'll be a, not many days to rest so FIFA have introduced five substitutes but they'd still need to happen three times. So, like, before it was one substitution or maybe two substitution or even a triple one, but it had to be taken in three steps. This one is the same, but with just more substitutions to make, so there will have to be two double substitutions or something like that. You could even make five at once if you wanted to. The Premier League is still working on a return for the 8th of June. Germany will be deciding in the next few days in the government whether or not the Bundesliga will return. And the same thing is likely to happen in the next few days with Syria as well. But moving on and actually talking of Syria to some big transfer news coming out of AC Milan where Gigi Donnarumma has been offered a new deal. The goalkeeper did originally have a contract which was running out next summer. So AC Milan rather bizarrely have only offered him an extra year on this contract the new one would run to contract the new one would run to I'm going to be honest about Tonaruma he's really not that good he's awful in fact if you've seen some of his bad performances you've literally seen him at his best he's not that good so if they give him a year that should be enough time to convince clubs to pay you maybe 40 50, 2022 and on top of that he'd have a million euros less million per euros season less now this per season now this that is fair though he, he's not that good he's had an awful season with ac milan Drop in wages is basically compensated by the fact that there is a huge, huge bonus for Donnarumma should AC Milan qualify for the Champions League. Of course, that's rather difficult to do this season if the season is to be cancelled, but next season especially. I know that they definitely, definitely don't want to lose him on a free transfer. He is one of their gems and certainly could fetch him quite a handsome fee should he be sold with the likes of Chelsea, Juventus and PSG all interested. But why then offer him only one more year? I mean, surely they're just going to be facing the same problem next Next year and if he's really sick and tired of AC then he'll just stick it out and definitely leave one a free. I'm not so sure it's the smartest deal in um, context to the length of the deal but certainly taking a bit of money off his wage is probably quite smart from the club's point of view. Whether or not he'll accept it though. And obviously the coronavirus so clubs are going to be in debt playing the wait the wages but no one's going to their stadium so they're not getting all of the money so football is going to be a bit weird but it's going to be an awesome summer now 
um, before the transfer. Well, that's a completely different matter after all, especially as his agent is Mino Real. But sticking with Syria and Francesco Totti, the legendary midfielder who knows a thing or two about being a rather good player, has backed pressure midfielder Sandro Tonale to become as good as Lampard or Gerard, one of the best midfielders in the world. The problem with that is, well, basically, hype really doesn't work. Ryan Sessegnon, two, I think it was, yeah, two, three years ago, he was being called loads of stuff. It, he was the most overhyped person ever. In the Premier League, he did nothing. He moved to Tottenham, he scored against Bayern Munich, and that's it, that's literally it. And it wasn't even a hard goal. Now, Inter Milan certainly domestically seem to be leading the race and a win to offer quite a few players to Brescia who would be relegated if Syria decided to have relegation in return for Sandro Tonnale. Now, the midfielder, according to Totti, has great turn of pace, is brilliant on the ball and has such composure no matter what game they are playing in. All the hallmarks of a pretty good midfielder, if you ask me. Again, on top of this, he's so young and well, he has so many years to learn, so many different things about football. Where better to learn that Inter Milan with some top quality midfielders in their side as well. Of course, on the flip side of this, like I do say with all young players. I'm going to give my prediction for this little kid person. In two years' time, he's either going to be playing in France with someone like Monaco, because the same thing happened to Golovin. He was being really, really hyped. He was almost going to move to Chelsea, but then he just moved to Monaco. Or he's going to be in the top half of the table in players they definitely Italy. need to be playing players, there's no way that Tonali should move to Inter Milan if he's going to sit on the bench but I'm pretty sure that they know all about his talents and would definitely he'd be advised he'd definitely be advised to move to a team where he knows he's going to play football I'm sure that if he went into contract negotiations and they're like yeah you're going to sit on the bench to get one or two cut games he definitely definitely wouldn't move anyway all the likeness to Perlo has been made only in his looks but his style of play as well and if Inter managed to get the next Perlo on their hands well they'll be in a pretty good position moving forward so lastly but not least a quick round up of the rest of the day's transfer where AC Milan and Arsenal are going to battle it out for Betis' Nabil Fekir in the upcoming I think he'd be a good player for Arsenal. Um, could be the next Bruno Fernandes for Arsenal there. Um, obviously, they're attacking mids. They're not too good. Chabayos, he did bring something new and something good for Arsenal, but he's been quite inconsistent. Hasn't played too much. Ozil's really not doing well anymore. So I think that would be a good deal, but... Barcelona. Did I hear that right? Is it Barcelona? Inter managed to get the next Perlo on their hands. Well, they'll be in a pretty good position moving forward. So, lastly but not least, a quick round up of the rest of the day's transfer where AC Milan and Arsenal are going to battle it out for Betis. I don't know where, where I heard Barcelona, but AC Milan v Arsenal. This is Nabil Fekir in the upcoming transfer window. Ryan Fraser of Bournemouth, whose contract is expiring in the summer, has apparently told close friends that his preferred destination is to join Tottenham. Ricardo Pereira has guaranteed Leicester fans he'll be staying at the club as long as they secure Champions League football. And Aston Villa's Conor Hurahan has said that teammate Jack Grealish's departure from the club is only in a matter of time. So there you have it. That's all for me for today. Make That's all for me for today. Yeah, I think with the Grealish one, he's definitely moving to Man United. I think James Madison, I think he'll probably stay at Leicester City because with all these this hype with Man United, Pogba's going to want to play. Uh, obviously, they've got players like Fred, Matic, all of them. Um, so, yeah, I think they're going to stick it out with um, Leicester, James Madison, but Grealish is definitely moving. But imagine having a, a midfield with Pogba at his best, uh, Nemanja, not Nemanja Matic, obviously not, Bruno Fernandes and Jack Grealish. And on the bench, you've got the likes of Scott McTominay, who's on great form, uh, you've got Fred, a fifty-two million pound player, just on the bench, casually. Uh, and then you've got the likes of Nemanja Matic, who is, you know, he's decent. And then you've got one Mata, but he can play out wide. I think they might be good next season. Make sure you let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Smash the like button once you're at it and check out all of our other stuff on One Football by clicking here or here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend. Stay safe and I'll see you guys Monday. And I'll see you guys Monday. Well, that was it, really. Uh, that was 
bit of a weird one, to be honest.